Hi everyone, I know I've been boring everybody about our Gorilla Challenge, but I'm very excited today because of course we've got Gladys Kalima with us, who is the Gorilla Doctor in Burundi. As you know, we're trying to raise money uh, to help build a Gorilla Health Centre out in Uganda. Uh, and so I've, I've grabbed Gladys because she's at London Vet Show uh, speaking, doing a lecture later on, uh, just to tell us a little bit about what's happening with the gorillas. Uh, you know, in Bawindi and in the surrounding areas. So, Gladys, in a way, we're always used to bad news, and I think it's good to have good news. Yes. The gorilla numbers have been growing, haven't they? Yes, they I have. I went 10 years ago, about 650. How many are there there now? There are 880. So that's yes. fantastic, isn't it? I and, know. And what's made pleased. the difference that they've grown over the last 10 years? What, what have been the major factors that have allowed the numbers to grow? Um, the major factors, I think, is that they're getting increased protection yeah. um, from law enforcement. There's fewer yes. poachers around. Yeah. They're getting better veterinary care. Yeah. Um, so if gorillas get caught in snares, instead of yeah. dying in the snare, mm -hmm. they can be treated. When they get diseases, sometimes right. from people, yeah. instead of dying, they can get treated. Yeah. And I think also because we're now doing programs where we're improving the health of the people around the yes. national parks, so that when the gorillas go out into people's gardens to eat yes. their banana plants, they're less likely to find people who are sick. Right. Um, we've had scabies in gorillas, which came from people living around the park right. who have very little health care. The baby yeah. gorilla died, and uh, we started to improve the health of the people around the park. And then also other efforts, like communities are given more benefits and uh, livelihood projects, so they have less needs to want to kill a gorilla. They really value the gorillas. And well, the tourists as well who come, yes. um, some of them actually end up giving direct support to the communities. Yeah. So all of that's making a difference. I know when I went 10 years ago, I stayed at Buhoma um, community uh, camp. Yes. And it, it's so important if the people locally see the gorillas almost as a resource rather than as a threat. Yes. Um, then that helps to sort of raise everybody's quality of life as well. So it can be really positive, whereas killing the gorilla then becomes a negative thing to do as well, doesn't it? It is. And actually, if any community member kills a gorilla, oh my God. They're very unpopular. And one yeah. person did kill a gorilla. And right. he was very unpopular. Yeah. yeah, I was told. And he killed the gorilla because the gorilla got into a fight with his hunting dog. He was right. hunting small antelope, diker in the forest. Right. That was really tragic. That happened in 2010. But I and know, um, I mean, obviously there, there was poaching at one point. So the actual, the law enforcement has now helped to kind of make that less and less common. It really has, and also changing community attitudes yeah. towards the gorillas and conservation of the forest means that they're less likely to poach. And that's also really important. It has to go yeah. hand in hand with law enforcement. Of course. And we're using healthcare as another way to improve their attitudes to conservation. So the gorilla's health and the human health are all kind of linked together really, aren't they? Because obviously diseases can be spread between gorillas and humans. Yes, because yeah. we share over 98% genetic material yes. can make each other sick yeah, yeah, yeah. except it's easier for us to go to the doctor it's harder for the gorillas to yeah. go to the doctor well I know yes. with the gorilla challenge we're trying to help you to build a gorilla health center which yes. will allow you to do even more I know we were speaking just before to a company who might be able to help you with a with uh, the equipment an analyze and so on yes. and all of these things just make a huge difference don't they they really do <coughs> they really do we're building a big center we have a small lab at the moment but we need to yeah. we're building a bigger center where you can yeah. do a lot more work not only on the gorillas, but the livestock. Because yeah. if you can find out where the livestock are sick, which interface with the gorillas, like the goats and the cows and the yeah. dogs, like yeah. that hunting, hunting dog yes. which go in the forest, then you're more likely to protect the gorillas as yeah. well. And we do also want to help the people, but um, and by help, we want to help the people also by helping their livestock. It's connected, isn't it? It's a yes. circle of life kind of thing. It know? really is. Yes. We've got the Gorilla Challenge. That's at the internationalwebinarvet.com forward slash gorilla challenge if you do want to get involved you can leave a little donation but also if you buy a ticket for the virtual congress which we're doing in january then 10 percent of the ticket sales will go directly to gladys to carry on the fantastic work she's doing so uh, you know please do support it and um, hope you've enjoyed the webinar the, the video and i'm just so pleased to have gladys on she's doing such fantastic work and i, I think a little round of applause actually there'll be a virtual round of applause now thank on you YouTube. And um, just to add, um, I'd like to encourage people to come and visit, just like Anthony did. Yeah. And it's a life-changing experience. Yeah, it really fantastic. is. Visiting the gorillas is a once-in-a-lifetime yeah. life-changing experience. And the people who work with them and live yeah. around them, it really is.
and can, you know you can come and volunteer with our organization yes. conservation through public health you can come and do research with us come and train there's lots of need for veterinary yeah. help there as well we, we work with community animal health workers and we've had vet students out to work with them and train them and it's well, been really good so we also host students as well in fact the BBA president next year Sean Wensley I think he came out to Uganda and worked with you didn't he yes he did yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. he should bring up yeah we host students and volunteers yeah, yeah. for Fantastic. sure yes and visit our website sure Anthony will put it up there yeah ctph.org for more information <laughs> oh, thanks Gladys. And thank, thank you, you so much, much, Anthony. Thank you, and take care. See you all, hopefully, at the uh, Virtual Congress, 10th of January 2015. Thanks.